Terrell, good to have you. First, just give me your take on the case, on the complaint itself and what you thought of it. Great to be with you this morning. Well, we, you've been discussing, I think, the right issues here, which is it's a it's an interesting complaint. It's a bit of a departure from a traditional vertical foreclosure case. Uh, it was voted out 3-1. So three Democratic commissioners supported the complaint. The one Republican dissented, which suggests that at least one commissioner didn't find adequate evidence here. And as you point out, in a more traditional vertical foreclosure theory, what the FTC would need to show is rivals using sales um, and incentives to withhold content. And in this case, I think that's going to be very, very hard. That's the economic evidence that you were referring to that's going to be essential if the staff is going to prove their case here. Um, do you expect that, uh, you know, again, we don't know how these are going to go, what judge is ultimately going to oversee this, but you do seem to be indicating at least at this point it's an uphill battle for the FTC? I, I think it's a challenging case for sure. It's consistent with Chair Khan and the Democrats on the FTC taking on uh, new vertical theories and trying to push cases that are very aggressive in merger control. But as you noted, they've struggled a little bit with actually making the case in those situations. And it's because they really do have to show a harm to competition. Again, here, uh, it, will be, it would be hard, I think, to show a real incentive, especially given Microsoft's statements already, that they're really going to withhold some of the AAA content that Activision has uh, from rivals, and that rivals who are very strong are going to be harmed um, if they did do that. And those are the key pieces of evidence. And uh, the complaint didn't provide a lot of that. Of course, the complaint that we can look at that's publicly available is redacted. So there might be some yeah. evidence under those redactions. But again, it, they didn't lay out uh, you know, any um, strong, compelling points, uh, at least in the publicly available complaint on that score. They define something they call the high-end gaming market as just having two parties, uh, Xbox and PlayStation. Nintendo apparently not a part of this high-end gaming market. Just curious as to your reaction to that. Well, antitrust lawyers love to draw narrow markets. Um, it's, it's how we look at uh, defining conduct and competition, and look at market share. Again, they didn't make any real allegations of market share here. As you know, they do define this high-end console market and sort of draw Nintendo out of it. I think typically we look at the console market more broadly um, in industry and think of Nintendo as very much being a player with it as well. So um, I, they'll have to show that, that really that is a narrow product market. Again, another, another bar that they're going to have to cross. And I think a challenge here as well is that the way the gaming industry works, which is incredibly dynamic and um, actually is constantly evolving. And um, in fact, there are tons of acquisitions happening within the industry all the time. Um, you know, one of the things that, that customers really want is to be able to play across platforms. And customers also multi-home. I think a lot of gamers are playing games, not just on one console, but on a variety of platforms. So the FTC is gonna have to really show um, that that those dynamics uh, push that don't exist and aren't strongly pushing towards making content more available, and I think that's going to be a tough bar for them.